Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel and today I would like to show you how to create schedules in AutoCAD architecture from scratch. Schedules can be very important, especially if you are trying to do an estimate or you're trying to uh, quantify the, the, the job or if you're trying to create a bill of material in order to make purchases or uh, for prefabrication purposes. Whatever the reason is, schedules can be very useful. All right, and so what schedule does is to pull specific information from each object in the drawing and you can put that in a table. So for instance, I can pull the length and the width of all the objects in the drawing, drop it in a schedule, and now I know the length and width of everything. You can pull other information like material, uh, volume, anything. All right, so today you're going to see exactly how that is done. We're going to just do a simple one, but of course the principles would be applicable to a lot of other scenarios. Now the steps that I'm going to be using in this video can be used across all AutoCAD tool sets. So not just architecture, you have mechanical, you have electrical, you have MEP and others. This process can be used across all of them. But before we jump into it, if it's your first time on the channel, thank you for joining. And if you want to get better at AutoCAD architecture, then you are at the right place. I do hope that you will consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this one. Everybody else, just jump right ahead, hit the like button and drop your comments, drop your questions in the comment section below. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, here we are back in AutoCAD architecture. And today I want to show you guys how to go about creating schedules for these two wooden frame structures here. So if you want to see how I go about drawing these in AutoCAD architecture, go ahead and check the link in the description below or in the cards above. All right. So when we're creating schedules in AutoCAD, it's important that we use the correct tools. Um, so for instance, uh, if you watched that previous video, you'd have seen that I used the structural member feature of the software to create these, and that's important. So these are considered AEC objects in AutoCAD. That's what they call it. So these are the type of objects that we can uh, create schedules for and, you know, pull out a lot of information about these elements in AutoCAD. So if we go to our style browser here, you can see that we have a, a number of AEC objects. Um, and of course, in this particular version of AutoCAD, which is the architecture version, um, we only have architectural stuff. And of course, if you go into the electrical uh, version or the MEP and so on and so forth, you would have uh, numerous other object types that we can choose from and create schedules for. All right. So, of course, I use these three uh, structural members to create both of these um, drawings here. And so this is what we will be working with today. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is to just turn off this line here because I don't want it to be in my. Well, it wouldn't show up in my schedule anyways, but just get rid of it for now. Now, the good thing is when we use AEC objects and we go to our properties palette and we go down to extended data, this is where we want to see all the information that we want to pull into a schedule. All right. So when you click on any of these objects, it should be reporting those parameters. All right. How do we add those parameters in here is the question. This button down here is the button. But if you notice, it is not active because we haven't created anything to be added in as yet. All right. So that's the first thing we want to do. But before I get into that, I wanted to show you guys just a little detail here that I did not too long ago. Um, because when you're creating schedules, you, you want to make sure that your drawing is perfect and to the exact dimensions and everything that you need so that these schedules can report properly. And so when I did the drawing for this arch in the previous video, I didn't have it like this, but I corrected it. Let's put it that way to make it so that we have four different pieces of lumber to create this arch. And I think um, I'm not a carpenter, but I think this is how it would be done in real life or one of the ways it could be done. And so what happened here, if I click on this piece, as you can see there, and we go to the, the properties, you can see that this is a two by eight piece of lumber. 
and you might be saying okay that doesn't look like a two by eight but it kind of is and was also cut to shape so what i mean is that all right let me isolate this object and so that's what it looks like and i'm gonna put this in wireframe as well all right but if i were to go to body modifier and say edit in place you can see now that what i did was to have a two by eight piece of lumber as you can see there and then i created these other two shapes to kind of well these are extruded shapes and i use these to cut away the parts of the wood that i don't need okay so that's exactly what's happening here and so what you're left with is just that piece of material and so that is how i went about creating um, these four parts for the arch of course i did one side and then copied it over to the other side and you know how that goes already so that's how i did that and you kind of want to make sure you get all of these little things correct before you create your schedule because you want your schedule to be read as best as possible all right so how do we go about creating um, the stuff that we need inside of here um, the name of that stuff is property set definition and so what we're going to do is to go to our manage tab and we're going to go to style browser we're going to go down to documentation and we have what we call property set definition okay so we're going to click on that we're going to drop this down and of course autocad would have some you know default samples in here for you but we're going to create a brand new one so what you would do here is to right click and say new and so right away we're going to give it a name since we're dealing with lumbers i'm going to just call this lumber objects and i'm not going to put any space in there just to keep it uh, uniform with these and then we're going to go across to applies to and so this is where you want to select the type of objects that this uh, definition will be applied to and so everything in our drawing would be a structural member because that's the only type of object that we used and so we're going to scroll all the way across until we find that and we're going to check that box right there and so that's going to be that of course at the top here it says apply to objects if you wanted to make it even more detailed we could go down into styles and definition but we're going to leave it at objects for now so any object that falls under structural member we could apply this definition to okay so once we select that we're going to go over to definition and this is where we're going to create uh, or add the parameters that we want to show up over inside of this uh, section here so the first one i'm not going to go through all of these buttons here guys so i would expect that you would explore and you know create a mess if you feel like <laughs> so the first one we're going to add is just a manual property definition so let's click on that and the first one i'm going to put in here is called part name so this is one that i want to add because i want to give each object a name for themselves and so I'm going to be manually entering that information. So this is where I would go about doing that. So part name, and I'm going to leave this as default and hit OK. And so as you can see here, it is added in and it says here standard, blah, blah, blah. OK, the next button I'm going to click on is this lightning here. And this is called automatic property definition or source. So these are the stuff that AutoCAD will automatically generate for you. You don't have to worry about anything. All right. So we're going to click on the ones that we need. So for instance, I think I would need length because I need to know the length of each uh, lumber. Also, I'm going to pick the style because the style is going to tell me if it's a two by four, two by two, so on and so forth. I'm going to also pick the object type to tell me that this is a structural member and uh, that's all I'm going to pick for now. You can go ahead and play around with that. And so these are the four things I'm going to be using. We could add more things in here, but I don't need to for this schedule. Um, but of course you have formulas, you have um, a lot of stuff. Just go through and check them out. But these are the ones we're going to be using for now. And we're going to scroll across and check to make sure everything looks good. The only thing I would 
add in here that's different is with the length I would make it so that the uh, format would be long length and uh, I want them all to be visible and in terms of order I want the object type to be number one I would like the style to be number two I would like the part name to be number three and I would like the length to be number four and this is the order in which it's going to be populated over here all right so that looks good and everything looks good you're going to hit OK and so now once we highlight all of these which would be structural members. So as you can see here, we have 93 structural members. When we go down to the bottom here, we can see that this button becomes available. And so we're gonna click on it. And then the same property set definition that we've just created now becomes available. So we're gonna check that and we're gonna hit okay. And just like that, you can see that it's being added here. So if I were to click on one of these members, it would pretty much read those information out and so now I can pull these into a schedule all right but before we pull them into a schedule we want to give each part a name so that's the part that's probably going to take a little bit of time but pretty much what you would do is to select all the parts that are similar so like for this post here I would go ahead and say select similar as a matter of fact let me go conceptual and I'm going to select all the posts at the same time select and I'm going to say post enter. I'm going to select all of these except this, this, this. All right. And as well as these, I don't want these to be selected. So All right, so these are the only things that would be considered beams as well as these four here would also be beams. So these are my beams. I'm gonna type the word beam in there. All right, and then rafters would be these guys here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These would also be rafters. So rafter and then I have purlings. So select all purling. And then I have these guys here, which would be bracing. And then I do have these arch pieces here which would also be some type of bracing. I'm gonna call these arch bracing. And then also I have these in here. So this is a, let me see. This is a two by two and this is a two by one. So I'm pretty much gonna select all of these here. Select similar. Now let's do the frame first, select, I'm going to call this framing. And then these ones in the middle here, I'm going to call these mullions. Mullions, all right. So I think we have named everything so far and that's what we need here. So what I'm going to do is to go to the plan view and we're going to create that. That looks like a mess. So let's raise the cutting plane up to maybe 12 feet. All right, good. So we're gonna create some schedules, one for this one and one for this one, and we're gonna see what that looks like. All right, so what we're gonna do here is to go to annotate and we're gonna say uh, schedule. So for now, we're just gonna choose a random schedule, room schedule, you know, we're gonna hit enter place it, we're gonna hit enter one more time. So if you notice it's a blank schedule, of course, we don't have any rooms in this area, so of course it would be blank. But what we're gonna do is to copy this style 
I'm going to create a brand new style and we're going to call this, um, let's call this the lumber kid deal. I don't know. Give it a name. And then we're going to go to applies to, and what do you want this to be applied to? So initially, because we copied the room schedule, of course, spaces would be checked. So we're going to uncheck that and we're going to check structural members because that's what we want this schedule to be reading all right and then we're going to go over to columns and this is where i'm pretty much going to delete all of these here just highlight them all and i'm going to say delete okay i'm going to just delete all of these and then i'm going to add a column so this is where i can go ahead and add the columns that i need so first column i'm going to add would be the object type i'm going to hit okay and I'm going to add another column, maybe like the, the style. Okay. But instead of style, I wanted to say, all right, let's style remain. I'm going to let style remain. I'm going to add column. I'm going to say part name, part name. Let's put a space in there. Okay. And then add length. Okay. And that's what we want. And then include the quantity column. We could do that. Um, yeah, let's do that. And then we're going to go over to, we could go sorting and grouping if we wanted to sort them by a certain column. Um, layout, this is where I'm going to change the name that shows up in here. So for this one, I want this to say uh, Pergola BOM. Hit OK. So that's what it looks like for now. And as you can see, all the columns are there. Now we just need to add this stuff that we need inside of it. So what I'm going to do here is to do like this. And I'm going to say, add all of these, enter. And just like that, we have a schedule showing us the quantities, the style, the naming, and also the length. And just like that, we have that done. What I'm going to do here is to copy this over and I'm going to say edit style. Let me see if I change this to Arbor, what's going to happen? Oh, it changes both. So undo. What I'm going to have to do here is to create us another style. So let me edit this style. I'm going to change this style to a pergola. Okay, and I'm going to copy this style and I'm going to call it Arbor. Okay, enter. Well, I actually want this to be the pergola style. And I'm going to copy this over. And I'm going to switch this style over to the Arbor style and then I'm going to say remove everything and add these little guys so now we have two different oh well this needs the naming in here needs to be changed over to arbor as well so let's change that over right there all right and so just like that we have um you know stuff in there I'm not sure why this one is showing blank. Is it because I didn't type something in there? There's a one by two in there. Okay, I know what it is. I think it would be these little guys on the side here. Um, let me see. This little guy on the side here. And this, hold on. This one, this one, this one, and this one. What should I name these? Um, let's 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 name these um, strips. I don't know strips. Let's call it that. And if you notice, when I update something, the schedule becomes, uh, you know, there's a line through it. And so what you need to do is to pretty much update that schedule. And so if you notice, that becomes updated there with all the lengths, all the part names, and all the stuff that we need. All right, guys, so pretty much that's how we would go about creating a schedule in AutoCAD architecture. It's pretty cool, pretty nice. 
and it's not that difficult if you think about it okay so that wraps it up for this video today i do hope that you learned something new if you have then do me the honors and subscribe if you haven't already and also for everybody just hit the like button for the youtube algorithm that helps the channel a lot so thank you all for the support on the channel so far and uh yeah respect big up to the patrons on my patreon page the link is in the description below thank you guys for joining and i'll see you in the next video